My brain's kind of in overload with, I don't even know. with my imagination right now. Don't touch anything. <laughs> People don't mysteriously vanish, folks. They had pet dogs and pet turkeys. And then you get there and you're like completely blown away. Have fun in the fields today, honey. Don't fall off the side of the cliff. This is your last chance to get a limited edition 2024 Total Eclipse. It's darker outside shirt or sweatshirt. We made it to Colorado, Mesa Verde RV Park. The girls were like, we're in Colorado? Yeah, they didn't even know we were in Colorado. <laughs> the weather was beautiful when we got here. I took a break from work, washed the truck. Yep. It's been beautiful here. Until the hail that woke us up this morning. Until the hail that woke us up this morning, until the day of our <laughs> reservation. It is 30 degrees cooler, it's raining. I don't know if they shut these tours down during the rain, because you gotta do like stairs and stuff. We have to There's like no climb stairs. down into the cliff. There's a lot more to this park than I thought. I just thought it was just random cliff dwelling in the desert, but I've been going over the map and there's stuff scattered everywhere. So we're excited, we're gonna go check out the visitor center, get the lay of the land, and uh, try to go make our tour for the palace tour. Fingers crossed. But I thank the sky above for pouring down her holy love to save a wretch like me. Oh, after the rain, when the clouds roll away, when my skin is soaked through with water, So the issue is, is there was a lightning strike, so they're combining two groups of tours right now, so things aren't going to be normal, but uh, looking at the weather, I kind of figured it wasn't going to be already. It's a little different. That's right. We're, we're just going to be a bigger group. Everyone gets to enjoy it together. It's a party. Okay, folks, we're going to try and move you all through in just a few minutes. Of course, you are going down the equivalent of an 11-story building, and you're walking up the equivalent of an 11-story building. So be ready for that. Other questions? Oh, you guys easy. are easy. What are the names of the, the ranchers that found it? Okay. Uh, there were some ranchers on Amenka's called the Weatherills, who are, who are given credit for finding it even though they were led here by some of the local natives okay. at the time. But it wasn't an accident, they were kind of being led here. Okay. I heard this on BBC three years ago, and then they mysteriously vanished. <laughs> people don't mysteriously <laughs> vanish, folks. No, there's 75,000 Pueblo people living in New Mexico today, practicing a lot of the same traditions that were already traditions when they lived here back in the 1200s. So they didn't disappear, they didn't vanish, they do exist. 75,000 strong, most of them in New Mexico. Let's head on down. Uh, there are some steep steps involved. There's actually four flights of uneven stone steps. There are four ladders on this hike. Each ladder is about nine feet. They're made out of solid wood. Uh, they're not on the edge of a cliff or anything like that. So far at Mesa Verde is nothing like I expected, especially the drive-in. The drive-in is spectacular, I but... Know. It was raining, so we couldn't really film anything, but the overviews are unbelievable. It's supposed to be done by the time we're finished with the tour. <laughs> yeah, we'll catch it on the way back. I didn't realize how high this entire area was. Look at that. Oh, is this stuff too, here? Look at this. What a cool life this, this probably was at the time. Sun's coming out, girls. It's not raining. I've always wanted to come here. Uh, take pictures, uh, make your observations, think of questions for us. Okay. And we're going to do our best to try to help you understand the site. Thank you. Thank you. Holy cow. I wonder how much of the mortar they've had to redo, or if this is all. Original. Well, that's one of the questions we can ask. Is this like, like the leader? Because that looks like a a bigger a bigger structure. Maybe. 
wild. Not insane. Look at the little like lilies. I live here. Lilies like. Yeah. Okay, so that's the overlook that we need to go yes. to to see over here. Yep. Look that's on the this Unbelievable. is unreal. They are completely covered, protected from the weather, protected from animals, protected from, I don't know, other tribes, clans, whatever you call them. I don't know, but she's giving it to oh, us. Yes. Cliff Palace, as you may know, is the largest cliff dwelling here in Mesa Verde National Park. There's over 600 cliff dwellings here in Mesa Verde, and they are mostly much smaller than Cliff Palace, 150 rooms, home to a community of about 100 people. They were all built in the 1200s, but the Pueblo people actually lived here at Mesa Verde for 700 years. And they farmed here for 700 years. For most of that time, they were living up on the Mesa top. And they were farming up on the Mesa top. But in the 1200s, throughout the region, people started building houses in Elko. Something was going on in the 1200s. And I don't know what. Now, one thing that you'll notice, on a day like today especially, is that it's dry and protected down here. Was that the reason why people built their houses down here? I don't think so. Because for hundreds of years, people had mastered the art of the waterproof roof building their house on the mesa top. It's an added bonus to be down here in the dry. The fact that we're down here in these dry alcoves is why we're here today. That's why these buildings are still standing. Right? Can you imagine those ranchers discovering this place? No. Like, and then finding everything basically intact still? Like everything was here. My brain's kind of in overload with, I don't even know. with my imagination right now. Can you imagine like a hundred people living here with you? So cool. So nuts. So I'm guessing there was some sort of roof over this yep. at one point. What we read was that they did have roofs and there's a hole in the roof and they climbed down a ladder in the hole of the roof to get in here. Reasons why we don't know why. The fact that we have all of these villages, these structures built in these alcoves is why we're here today because it's dry, right? That's why this is so well preserved. This allows us to then understand what all of those villages were like in the surrounding area. Because the Pueblo people built villages like this out in the open throughout this whole four corners. So here you just don't need as much imagination. You have to use a little imagination here, like you put roofs back on top, right? Every single building had a roof, every single room had a roof. Every single one, including this one. So standing here 800 years ago, no worries about falling into anything. So there's a flat roof, you just walk across. Um, each one of these buildings, these are called kivas, had a flat roof on them. I wonder if it was rebuilt. I don't know, next. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, so actually, um, I'd say Cliff Palace is about 80 to 85% original, um, but it's not evenly distributed throughout. So um, for example, that pathway we just walked on, that retaining wall is holding it back, 100% reconstructed. When you start looking in the back here, much of this, 100% original. Wow. In between, it's a mix. Wow. So, I mean, I say 100% original, it's probably 99% original. There's been stabilization. Sure. Like patching up uh, some of the walls so they don't uh, collapse. So were these storage or were these for living? Yeah, so these spaces are living spaces. Uh, these round underground rooms called kivas. And kivas um, are actually still used today by the Pueblo people, by 75,000 plus people who are descended from the folks who built these homes. They're community gathering spaces, they're places for meetings, places for religious ceremonies, stuff like that. But here at Mesa Verde, the kivas were more of a family room. So they were used for all of those gathering purposes, religious purposes, meetings, etc. But they were also a room in a family's home. And so they were both living space plus communal space. Um, every family would have one kiva plus five to ten above ground rooms. And so you can kind of look at where we're standing and imagine that we're standing in a family's home. Right through the fireplace behind you. Yep, right over there. Oh, cool. So that tells me that was a living space. That was a room that people lived in. They had fires. They were using it for cooking, for keeping warm. Oftentimes, though, you find rooms of a similar size that don't have fireplaces. And those rooms may be used for storage, may be used for... Um, Here's a fancy archaeological term you guys might not understand. Other stuff. Yep. <laughs> Other stuff. I learned that one. Uh, you are good. I like you. Um, Can you talk about that fire in the vent? Yeah. As to all of the features you're looking at in the kiva, you've got the central fireplace or hearth. The smoke comes up and out through a hole in the center of the ceiling. And then you've got a, a ventilation shaft. The hole in the top is also entrance in? It is, yes. Okay. You climb in and out through that hole on a ladder. Okay. Thanks for joining me and enjoy your rest of the time in the park. Thank you. Thank you for the tour. 
Oh, that's cool. Oh, they got like little tunnel systems in the back. So the back wall was used kind of like a spiral staircase to get up all those different levels. This is insanity. Did you I see what it looked like in there? Isn't that amazing? Houses here, you can just do I know. You want. I know. This is incredible. Yeah, it really is. Those guys coming out. I mean, what a weird and awesome life this probably was. Yeah. I don't know, maybe they, they lived here because they had to because of a, there was an enemy down south. You never know. And in the 1200s, the enemy was defeated and there was an easier way to live down south. Maybe. So maybe that's what they did. I think the mystery behind it all is what makes it so intriguing. It makes it fun. And the ingenuity that went into like building this place. That's unbelievable. It's just incredible. Look how fast those clouds are moving. I know. I think we're gonna get some nice views on the way down. That's yeah. gonna be exciting. So now we're gonna go and try to find the different overlooks for Cliff Palace and some of the other Thank you. I'm so glad no one got killed by lightning. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> but this is one of those places that's kind of hard to leave just because our time's up. I know. And uh, there's just so much more to explore. So this exit is their original access to this. It's a pretty gnarly uh, daily commute. Yeah. Can you imagine? Have fun in the fields today, honey. Don't fall off the side of the cliff. Oh, oh dang. What? Look at this. What in the world? Wow. Cow. <laughs> I this wonder, is they must have had like ladder systems or something. Cause obviously this is some concrete. Holy cow. Oh my God. What is this tour? Wow. Look what I just came up from. Wild. <laughs> this is cool. I had no idea this is what this tour was like. What? This might officially be the biggest spider oh my I've ever gosh. seen. That's got to be a tarantula. That is crazy. I've never seen we one have before. never seen one. Okay, so we were in a herd of people on our way down to the tour before. This is where it starts. That we weren't able to look at this overlook. So we're going to check that out right now. Pretty cool seeing that tarantula. Never seen one before. Because you can see down into the yes. top. Yes. So they were tucked away. You had to be on this side over here or walking around to specifically see these people down here. So it was a well protected area. You can see over there, that's how we exited. You see that white hat of the yeah. ranger? We had our tour kind of right there. Walked and then behind that big rock is that the crack that everybody walked up into. The crevasse. Crevasse. <laughs> that was so cool. And I would have loved to have been alive at this time and designed my whole little fortress. <laughs> when I was a kid, I made like a, I don't even know, nine story tree fort, you know, when I was like 10 or 11 and it was awesome. There's photographic evidence of this, so he's not telling a lie. His parents talk about it all the time. He asked his dad if he could build a tree fort, and his dad was like, yeah, sure, son. So we got all the neighborhood boys together, and they built this insane monstrosity that was very unsafe. And so his dad not, was like, I'm was taking this. Uh, well, then my so. dad was like, okay, if you tear this down, I will build you a proper house. tree house. Which he and did. it wasn't a tree house. It was just a sweet building <laughs> with a deck. <laughs> it was awesome. We had so many campouts in that thing. Stephen Mather. Stephen Mather had his little paws and everything. He we really liked that did. dude. He was awesome. Okay, so the museum is closed, but there are trails all around here. Of course, yeah, we missed it by just like a half an hour. Um, but there are trails all around here. This is the Spruce Treehouse. Wow, see, look at this one. Oh, cool. I 
like this one more. This Isn't one's got, amazing. It that looks like it's got like a courtyard or something. That one, yeah, this is like a full on house. It's completely intact down there. Oh man. This is Spruce Tree House. And this is kind of what I was talking about in the beginning. I had no idea it wasn't just that one place. There's these cliff communities everywhere. Oh, they call them alcoves, but they're everywhere. She said there's 600 in this area. That's unbelievable. That just goes to show you what you think you know about a national park. And then you get there and you're like completely blown away. Mm -hmm. So Spruce Tree House, they say, is the most well-preserved of all of them in the park. It's still got plaster on the walls. And when these places were discovered, they had jewelry in it. They had pottery. They had everything in it. People just kind of disappeared like they thought they were coming back. Mm. There was evidence that that had happened many times in the 700 years that they lived in these cave dwellings. They had left and come back. So one of the theories is that they left and either found something better or something kept them from coming back. That's crazy. That's the that's the best part about this. You get to, your brain can really, you know, run wild in a place <laughs> like this, thinking about what could have happened. All right, I'm not actually sure what's happening with my hair in that last clip, but I wanted to jump on here to make it clear that when you do go to Mesa Verde, you need to book these tours in some of these specific houses online. So when they were talking about the three and the 330 reservations combining with our big group, it was that we had reserved those sites. When we booked, it was about $2 per person. Just wanna make sure that you have that information before you head into the park. I also wanted to remind you that this is your last chance to get a limited edition 2024 Total Eclipse. It's dark outside shirt or sweatshirt I will put a link in the description below as well as a pinned comment we are so excited to be meeting up with many of you guys at our nightlight rally in Texas for the eclipse but for those of you who are going to be watching totality somewhere else us along with Lester more journey are so excited to celebrate with you guys and to commemorate this event that's not happening again until 2044 we can't wait to see where you guys are watching totality so please make sure you tag us in your photos at finding our someday at less drunk more journey and hashtag Hashtag, it's darker outside. So this Kiva right over here is the one she was talking about that has the hole in the top of it and the ladder sticking out so they would climb down inside that. So we're on the Mesa Top Loop trying to get to that overlook I talked about in the very beginning to see Cliff Palace. So this is one of the first stops on that loop. This is a pit house. So this is where they lived before they went into the alcoves and under the alcoves. Oh my gosh! Holy moly! So like you've probably seen in other areas, they dig down, they dig up short walls and then put a roof over it. Come look at this. Pretty cool. So yeah, they said that they would use like logs across the top and all around and then put the roof on top of it. Look That's how so cool, cool that must have been. But they're saying that it was like a trend that they all moved under the alcoves. That wasn't something that always happened. Yeah. That's what they said. They. So who knows? <laughs> but they said it was a trend. It said that they started up top on top of the Mesa and then something or the idea came about to move under the alcoves. Along this loop, there's multiple places where you can stop, but they're showing that this is kind of what it would look like with all of these like covered little. Yeah, more a more traditional like village layout yeah. versus, you know, the, living in the cliffs. Yeah, living in the cliffs. <laughs> wow, that's super cool. Okay, let's go find this overlook that I thought was our only thing we were trying to do here. Yeah. So much to do. I definitely didn't give this park enough time. I thought it was that tour and they were gonna be one and done. I did not realize you could easily spend a whole day here. That's if not way. more than one day, especially if you, if you wanted to do multiple tours. So the moral of the story is give yourself some time 
and make sure that you get in as many of the tours as possible. So the next time we come, we're gonna better plan our time. We're not gonna be rushing off to the balloon fiesta. Yeah. And uh, we're gonna make sure we get in a lot of the other tours. Cliff Palace tour, balcony house tour. <gasps> balcony looks awesome. You have to climb through like tunnels and yeah. go up massive ladders, way bigger than what we did today. And then I don't know if the Spruce House is available for tours. It's not right now, but I don't know if normally it is. All right, so this is the next stop on the Mesa Top Overlook Loop. Square Tower House. So cool. This is absolutely fascinating. Jeez. This one doesn't look like it's got as much of an overhang as some of the others. Yeah, which means this one was like deteriorating a little bit faster. This is the one where I really want to be able to do this tour next time because they actually scaled the cliff by drilling like holes in the walls and using it like as like a sideways ladder kind of going down. Um, I've and seen they really use ropes and ladders too. Ropes and ladders too, but I've seen really cool photos of like how you can see that when you take this tour. So that'll be fun for next time. This place is massive. Fungus. Was it some big circular structure or something? Yeah, it's a sun temple. Huh. Good location. Wow. It's huge. Whoa. And of course, you know, look at the view they had. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. They're like, yeah, this is a good, we'll just build it right here. This is, this is all right. I guess it's okay. This is <laughs> beautiful. Can you walk in there a little ways? You can just look into the little, the little peepholes. I wonder if I can reach over the Looks wall. Looks like a maze. I should have brought my... It's just like a maze of all these. What birds. do you see, Don't... I know, what do you see? What do you see? <laughs> so they have yeah, a wall and then an inner wall. Walls. <laughs> so strange. What was it used for? Oh, wow. No, no, this is it. It's Come super look. cool. No, yeah, look. You want to look? Oh, yeah? Hmm? No. You don't want to get your eye near that, do you? Mm -mm. <laughs> cool. No, thank Blair you. I was like, I'm not touching that. I haven't died yet. You don't want nope. pink eye? Nope. All set. <laughs> Had it in the past. I know I'm going to help mom chase me with eye drops. <laughs> Alright, so this was wow. the thing I thought we were going to do forever ago. You can see the viewing point that we were at last in the corner right there, and that is Cliff Palace right there. So cool. Unbelievable. Wow. It looks so like small from here, and then when you're standing over there, you're just, oh, it's like, massive, so though. amazed at how big it is. Can you imagine how many people must have lived in this one area? Amazing. There must have been so many people. So many people. But even though Cliff Palace and all the other dwellings are insanely impressive, we're not even really seeing them because we're missing probably half the walls. Mm. We're missing probably the, the plaster that they had, the decorations. They all had more stories. They all had roofs. There was so much more to this place. And I can only imagine what it looked like. Like, it looks like a dream to me now, but <laughs> holy cow, I bet it was really something to see. All, all of the smoke, all of the activity, cooking fires, and there was just so much going on here. I bet it would have been something to see that's for sure i think one of my favorite like weird things about this this place and these people is that they had pet dogs and pet turkeys oh, yeah. so like these these developments were filled with turkeys running around that were their pets which is hysterical that's wild so the sun popped out it was raining when we first got here now it's beautiful i think we're going to be able to see some of those viewpoints or just the views in general on our drive down because we are way up here like this is way up here this park is way more than i thought cool. now next stop the balloon fiesta <laughs> so we're we're making a pilgrimage to the albuquerque balloon fiesta for the very first time and all the things i thought i knew would change 